What's going on everybody? I know it's been a while, uh, but I kind of want to get you guys involved again a little bit here and there. Uh, the channel's been doing really well on its own lately. I don't really know why, but I've been looking at the analytics and it's kind of just keeping itself afloat right now. So I'm happy with that and I figure why not use this as a gateway to get you guys involved again on what I have going in the works. So did a lot of stuff on this and obviously you get, uh, a lot of you guys know we did the audio in Pegasus. So there's a lot of stuff I could have been uh, filming, but yeah, missed out better late than never. So I uh, figure why not while I have the time. Work is kind of fluctuating right now, so I have a lot of time on my hands and uh, still got a lot of work to do on this. So we're not late, but uh, why not get started now? So we got the car in the shop here. It's been a while since I've actually done like an update on it. Um, last time I think you guys seen this was at the firm in January. So after that, went ahead and changed up the entire engine base so everything under here is different let me uh, pop it open for you guys so so here i can kind of get my feet wet and tuning and try to learn how that stuff goes so i can kind of make adjustments on the fly and whatnot but yeah a lot of a lot of stuff has changed uh you can see we got the skunk to the pro intake and uh this is also edelbrock throttle body this is the big one i think it's like a 72 millimeter or something like that it's freaking massive it's something up there so a lot of stuff has changed this car's still not tuned yet it's just got a little base map in it with no VTEC so we can uh, just drive it on and off the trailer and whatnot but uh, the car moved into the shop full-time so it's been giving me a lot more like leniency on getting stuff done fast and rushing so I've been really taking my time on this one you can see for those who don't know this was the old head uh, that fuel rail wasn't on there. That I just got that. Um, that came with that, but the fittings were missing, so it's pretty much useless for me. But yeah, this is the old setup. It's been for sale for a while now. Um, a lot of you know how that goes. But what I want to do today is, being that the wide band isn't working, and you can see the wire there because I was messing with it. The wide band isn't working. Uh, it. What it is, this is a PLX, and I've always had the issue since the day we unboxed that PLX wideband and installed it. Once you give it a little throttle, that wideband cuts out for like a few seconds, like 20, 30 seconds or something like that. And then it'll finally come back. Or sometimes it may not come back at all and you have to reset it. So, that's been a tuning issue for a long time now. So, all of my wiring in the car... You can see is very hidden. All of my modules and whatever controllers are all in here are all under the dash. And initially when this build started, it was all ran very clean. There wasn't really much in here, just a wideband controller and a few other relays and whatnot, fuse panel. And it was all wired real nice. Well, over the years of adding stuff and adding stuff over and over, it all just got piled up and now it's a freaking nightmare under here trying to even you can't even get in here to work anymore so it kills my back anytime i have to change a fuse or something happens under there so now that we're doing this wide band i figured that's an opportunity to go and rewire everything let me show you which let me show you uh what we're working with you can see we got relays just hanging just quick stuff that's been added here and there that relay there is hanging because I knew I was going to be doing this soon, so I literally just put this one in, so that one's temporary. You can see the other one's just tied up up there, my fuse panel in the background. Look at all of this wiring. That's a lot to go through. So, God forbid a problem happens out on the track. I'm the only one, mainly, that can fit in here because it is a very tight space, and, you know, that's just not logical. All traditional race cars you see either have their... Uh, electronics mounted on the cage or they mount it on the floor or they mount it on the firewall so I have stuff on the way it'll be here today but we're gonna go ahead and get started start cutting some wires and labeling stuff up so once it comes time to mount everything up and terminate wires it'll be nice and easy and a breeze but first things first I want to start this thing up for you guys let you guys get a listen the tablets not in here right now I always leave it inside but you can see even under there, that's all wiring for these gauges and the tablet. So that's stuff that's kind of got to stay. But you'll see here, give it a little listen. Oil 
pressure is good. 80 PSI. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. See? See what I'm saying? You guys just seen it here first. While before I even turn the switches off, that and that just turned off. So that's something that I would have to be looking at right now and figuring out what's wrong with it, and I'd be breaking my back over. So that's why we're doing this. So this will be fixed and we won't ever have to worry about something like that happening. Let me go ahead and we're gonna pull out the seats, both seats. We're gonna pull out the door bars off the cage and that'll give us clean access so I can get in here, lay down on both sides and we can start tearing apart our wiring and cleaning everything up. All right guys, so to take these out, I just had to pull this pin, which is really handy. This is supposed to open if you have a uh, car with a wider opening or if your cage is up further, but this doesn't, it's just for easy removal. I could always replace that with a bolt if you really wanted to. But I already broke this loose, so just take this off. Pull the washer off. And it should slide right out. Now, usually this thing's in here pretty good, so I might have to tap on it a little bit. It's coming. I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down so I don't drop it and scratch it all up. All right guys, so we got one door bar out. You see nice and clean opening here. I could almost leave the seats in and do it this way, but with this tab here and the bar coming down, uh, I'd probably still end up breaking my back over here. So it's just much easier to just pull the seats, four bolts done, and then um, I could unhook the belts. So we'll go ahead and get this seat out now and move over to the other side. All right, guys, so got the whole side over here, driver's side taken apart. You can see my hooks and everything, so it's very dirty under here. As you can see, it doesn't really get cleaned under there very often because it's kind of hard to access. So I'm definitely going to be cleaning this up before I go ahead and lay in here because that is disgusting. But um, that was pretty easy to take out, so i do the other side. All right, guys, so we got both sides apart, seats there, door bars over there. So I really didn't have to take that door bar out, but it's gonna make it easier when I go to put the other seat back in. Cause I ended up pulling the seat out from this way cause there's not enough room to get out there. So now I'm gonna pull out the fire extinguisher, get that out of the way. It's probably still good. Yeah, yeah, it's still good. You see the needle right there. So this thing was from 2019 anyways, I believe. I don't see the sticker on it, but I'm actually going to set this over here. See my little collection I found from when I was a kid in one of these totes up here. But um, yeah, so let me go ahead and clean this all out because that side's even worse. You can see got a lot of buildup right there where those little drains are. I have little tiny drain holes drilled in in case water gets in here. So let me go ahead and get some detail and wipe that out. All right, so I didn't go crazy on it because I'm gonna be walking in here in and out a lot uh, while we're doing this process. So I'll clean it up real nice later and get it all the little stains and stuff out. So if it needs a little touch up paint, we'll go ahead and do that while we're here. But now we got a nice clean area to be working in and get started on tearing this apart. All right, so the way I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start on the driver's side since there's less under here. And I'm going to work my way over to the passenger side. And then once we get to that point, we'll see what needs to be replaced, uh, what doesn't. And get ready to start running it all up into here. And start tearing our fuse panel and everything apart. Alright, so this is what we look like under the driver's side. You can see there's not much here. We got the factory fuse panel. So that's kind of just gonna stay where it's at because I never have to touch this there's actually not really much left in this that's still hooked up so I can probably actually pull a lot of these fuses out and use them as spares but that'll be for a later date that's not really necessary this fuse needs to or this uh relay needs to come off this is for the fuel pump and that's all gonna have to get rewired and the wires can get shortened to go back there and then we can start pulling everything over to the passenger side Hi guys, so quick little update on where we're at. Uh, this is my light trigger for the steering wheel. This runs to, actually no, this is going to 
the factory relay for the lights. So when I press the button on the steering wheel, trips those. Uh, this is all the wire we've taken out. So we got two ground wires. Oh, here's one. Here's the other, and two extreme. Actually, yeah, two long power wires, and then another wire for something. Um, I didn't label these because these are going to be permanently out. A lot of them were power wires coming from the fuse panel for relays, so those will be a lot shorter once they're all over there on the panel. So what I'm doing now, I had my fuel pump relay sitting right here hanging. These wires I was using, these are the factory fuel pump wires. I was using these to trigger the fuel pump once I upgraded. Everyone said you needed a relay, so I kind of did it half-ass back then. Um, this is the factory relay or factory fuel pump wire coming from the relay and this is going to the fuel pump so I'm gonna solder these back together I was using this to trip the relay and then this to send the power to the fuel pump this wire is way too small so it used to get kind of warm to the touch after running all day I would feel that relay is like on fire so that's gonna get corrected I'm still gonna use it as a trigger so that's why we're soldering it back together I'll just pull from over here and I'll run a fresh thicker gauge wire to the fuel pump so this way here we don't ever have to worry about that again all right, so I soldered that back together, went ahead and wrapped this back up. Another thing I like a lot, I wanna show you guys, is this electrical tape. This is like uh, what they use from OEM, GM in my Chevy over there. And this stuff is really nice. It's sticky though, so be cautious with whatever you put this on. Use it wisely, because once it's on, you pretty much have to cut it off, so. But it's really good for making stuff look beautiful. You can see I, look, I used it on all this. And it wraps nice and tight, and it will it will not come off. So unlike this stuff here where it could come off or if it gets a little contaminated, it won't stick. All right, so we finished up with the driver's side. Like I was saying, there's not much under there. It's just those two relays and a couple other things. So now we're moving to the big mess over here on the passenger side. We're going to start taking this out. A lot of this stuff's already labeled, so we're going to go ahead and just get the rest labeled up and pulled out. All right, little update. There's the PLX control module. Um, got some relay harnesses. You can see all my wiring is all taken down. We slimmed it out a lot, uh, taking all this out. So, still got a lot more to go though. A lot of stuff was already labeled, so I didn't have to worry about that. But uh, we're gonna continue from here. All right guys, about an hour plus later, I uh, got some more stuff labeled up, but you can see we're cleaned up over here I just gotta tie that stuff up and we thinned out a lot of it so um, a lot of this stuff's got to stay but I still got to clean it up but I'm not gonna do that until I get the fuse panel and everything in so I can start running all my wire and then once we're all said and done we will start cleaning everything up so then uh, it'll all look pretty in the end so this is all we got out today uh, I'm pretty much gonna end it off here I'm waiting on UPS now to drop off all this stuff. So I got a new fuse panel coming with more slots and it also has a ground distribution on it. So that'll be nice. I can have all my grounds and everything right there. And then all the new wire and sheet of ABS to mount it all. And then um, yeah, I'll probably do some stuff off camera, like extend some of these wires so then they can reach over to, I'm thinking I'm gonna mount it over here. If I find something better along the way, I'll probably do that, but so far I'm set on mounted on the cage, and then we'll go from there. So as soon as UPS gets here, I'll start on that, but other than that, I'll end it off there. I'll have the GoPro charged up so you guys can get a wider view tomorrow when we come back to continue on this. But other than that, that is pretty much it. Thank you guys for tuning in. I uh, figured I'd just get you guys involved on you know what kind of work goes on on this thing so this is a little more extensive than uh, I'd say rebuilding a motor or whatever this is very tedious and you can't forget something because if I go and turn this on and something's not working I know I screwed up so otherwise that's pretty much it hope you guys enjoy catch you guys next episode